So hello everybody, my name is Matthew White. I work in the Business Transformation Center here at Inger Micro. And we're going to be going today through UCCX. This is the new 12.5 platform. And really this is the user interface. So this would be if you are an attendee jumping into this, you're gonna be like say a call center agent. You're gonna be looking at this as far as stats and who's on your line and you wanna see how you're doing in the day. Like pretty much all of those are shown here on the main statistics screen. These are all called little widgets. I can take those and drag them around. I can resize them if I wanted to, to make it easier for me to see and read. But like this widget here is showing me my agent ID, and then it's showing me what lines I'm currently on. And as an agent, I can be assigned to multiple lines as I am here. I could be assigned to different lines at different times of day. So on the back end, as a manager, I can actually go through and put people at different skills. And these that's what this considers a line is a skill. And you can be rated on different skills even. So you could say that you as a particular call center agent is a 10 on this skill and somebody else is a five and somebody else is a one. And the people with a higher skill level on that line will take the calls before somebody that's a lower skill level. So the advantage of that is that you have people that are better in certain areas answering a call before somebody that's not as good in that area. And that could even be say a French line versus an English line. So if you have multiple different uh, languages that you're trying to support. You might have someone that speaks French fluently and somebody that kind of speaks French fluently and you want the person that really speaks French fluently to pick up that line before the other person. You could do that as well. And you can time those out throughout the day. So say uh, somebody usually goes out to lunch at a certain time or the call center starts to scale back at a certain time and you need other people on additional lines. You can do that automatedly. Uh, so that way you don't have to go through and uh, like change it manually throughout the day. If I look over here at my like statistics report, so usually what you would do is you would set these out the way that you feel like you need them, and then you would save that layout so that way you're not having to readjust these all the time. But this really gives me my talk time, my hold time, ready time, not ready after call work, all the stuff that you guys are currently aware of in the call center that you really have to uh, keep your statistics the way you're supposed to be, whatever talk time you're supposed to have or avail time that you're supposed to have. This allows you to see that with just looking at your dashboard instead of having to go dig somewhere else for that information. I also have my team summary. So the advantage of something like this is I can see anybody else on my team, if they're logged in, if they are ready or not ready. So if I was to switch myself up here and put myself in a ready state, back down here, I've now switched to ready and everybody else on my team can see this. And you can also see the reason codes for my not ready. So if I go back up here and change this to, let's say lunch, and I scroll back down, I can see that I'm uh, not ready and I'm currently away for lunch. So this allows me to quickly take a glance and see if everybody on my team is available, if some people are not available, should I go on my smoke break now? Should I go to the bathroom right now? All those type of things that you can make a more educated decision as a standard phone tech by just looking at your team instead of having to reach out to somebody in management every single time you have to do that. Now, now the only real difference between 12.5 and 12 in this particular case is the ability to resize and to drag these little boxes around. In 12.0, they were pretty much set standard. So an admin would have to create this template and then they would push it out to everybody on the team. So as a company, you could have this situated different ways, but as an individual, it was pretty much locked as this is what you're gonna see. So uh, a nice little feature there. The only other thing that they really added with the 12.5 in this environment is if I go over here and I can click on short keyboard shortcuts, I can actually see all the different things that I can do via a keyboard shortcut now, where these all used to be just mouse clicks. If you're a person that likes to use keyboard shortcuts, you can now go through and actually find those in here uh, instead of having to find those somewhere else. Personally, I still like to use the mouse clicks, but keyboard shortcuts can get you around a lot faster if you get used to them. So it's a nice thing as a new user to maybe print out and post next to your cube and just get used to using them. So, from this point of view, um, I can take and answer a phone call, just like I showed you a second ago, going into ready, not ready. Um, I can pick my what things I am ready for. So this is my phone calls. This over here is my email and chat. So I can be ready for both. 
and whatever comes in first, it will take. I can have it take both a chat and a call. I could have it take more than one chat at a time. I could have it take more than uh, one line on the call side at the time. Really, as an admin, I can choose how I want my organization to flow and how many things I think somebody can handle at a given point in time. So it can't be changed per line, but it's changed at the organization as a whole. So I can say that everybody in my organization can take a chat and a phone call at once because I figure that they can answer the chat in between the phone call if somebody puts them on hold or that kind of stuff. Um, but if I choose as a user, I can also go not ready in the chat and then I'm only gonna be getting my phone call or vice versa. I could make a away message here be chat and then I can make this one over here be in the ready state. So it's really up to you on how you want to handle this. You could even make certain lines be chat only and certain lines not. It's really up to you as an admin how you want to set that up. Now, if I was to put myself in ready on both of these, I can also see over on this side here, I cannot currently sign out. If you're, if you're signed into the call side, you cannot sign out while you're signed in. You do have to go into not ready before you can actually sign out as a user. Uh, you also have your desktop chat and you have your make new phone call. So you can actually call other users just by clicking on them. And you can also search for a contact or I can just do a standard dial if I wanted to. And this is how you would easily bring somebody else uh, into the line if you needed to do a quick conversation with somebody to find an answer, that kind of thing. But let me show you how you would do that if you're actually calling that person. So let's actually flip over to, uh, so let's say we're on a website and over on the side here, we have a talk to the expert. I can pop that out and I can pick chat with a bot. I can text with a bot. I can call directly in. So let's go ahead and let's chat with a bot right now. And it's gonna connect me to the bot. now. On the bot side, you can have this bot be automatically able to answer certain things, like you can set it up to answer questions about the times you're open, or uh, if there's a simple return policy that you need to have communicated out. Basic things are usually things that you would have answered by a bot. So it can look for like keywords, and then based off of those keywords, the AI kind of does a little bit of backend configuration and says, okay, you're probably looking for this answer, and then it can push that answer out to people. But on the flip side of that, you can also ask to just talk to an agent. So if I just type an agent, that's a keyword that the bot is looking for to actually get me in touch with a real person. And on the back side here, I'm gonna see incoming chat, just like I would see an incoming phone call, who it's from, uh, what bot it's coming in from. And then I can hit go ahead and answer that. And it actually jumps me over to the manage chat and email. And you can have all the email come through here as well. So that way it's all managed in one location. And down here I can type my message back and forth. So this is something that uh, I did give some feedback to Cisco back on, which is I can't resize that window. Well, it does allow me to resize, but if I resize, I can't see my type section. So there's a little bit of a hiccup there in, in how it's laid out, but this is still, like I said, EFT. But if I type in hi here, it automatically sends that high message over to the person sitting there on the chat. And we can go back and forth and chat as long as we want. And then I can uh, end the chat on this end, or I can have the uh, Cumulus rep and the chat from this side. So I can also put in wrap up codes. So I can say like what I have to spend additional time on after the call is done. And I can choose to say, like it's a hotel discussion, so there might be some additional stuff on the back end. And you can actually have more than one wrap up reason as well. And different wrap up reasons can be programmed with different amounts of time as well. So I could say that a particular wrap up reason should be an additional five minutes or an additional wrap up reason should be an additional 30 seconds. And it gives that timer as a wrap up reason before it kicks you back into a ready state automatically. Now you can also choose to go into a not ready after a call manually. Uh, and then you have to pick a, a manual reason for not being available for that call. And I can also invite another agent as well. So I can search for that agent through my address book if I wanted to, to uh, pretty much do a consultation with somebody else. It's kind of like uh, conferencing somebody in on a con call. So you can do that via chat though as well. And then I can go ahead and end, end the chat. And then back at the website, 
the person uh, can also be pushed out a survey and you can actually specify how often you want the surveys to go out do you want them to go out to everybody do you want them to go out to a percentage of the people but i could say here that my service was uh two today because he sat there and didn't really ask me any questions so i had to push the conversation myself and uh, maybe I've had good experience in the past, so I'm gonna say it's a four overall. And now that information will be collected on the back end and actually pushed up to management so they can tie in this service scale to you as a user to see, hey, is this person doing a great job? Is this person doing an okay job? How are they stacking up to everybody else on the team? That kind of stuff. And it allows you to just, as a management member, get a lot better insight into how your team is doing and how people that are talking to your team feel your team is doing. And as far as like texting with a bot, so this is going through a uh, text service on the back end, so an SMS service, and it can actually uh, text back and forth instead of having to use this particular website. And then we also have call us. So this would actually pull up just a, a phone line and that eight minutes that you saw there was the wait time that's figuring out from historical information on the back end uh, but this is saying that we currently have a number that we can dial into with the whole work from home recently we've had a lot of government locations having to have people answer phone calls from their house but they don't want to be pushing out everybody's personal cell number or things like that out to their public website so the advantage of something like this is just like our call center is currently working from home you can actually tie an IP phone into this system and have those people take those calls from home directly as well, as long as they have high speed internet and be able to answer just like they were in the office. And it gives you right. like a really good interface that you can also tie into uh, tracking systems on the back end to really do customer management and like Salesforce and things like that can all be tied in. So when somebody calls, they can be pulled up and it can give you information about that person. So a customer can can take their physical like office IP phone if they were to take it home, would they be able to tunnel back to the network via expressway to continue taking and taking calls on that phone? Exactly. Yep. Okay. So there, there's ways around that too. And then it, for those customers that want to go fully cloud, there is another version of this, uh, the cloud contact center, which is coming. It's invite only currently, but it pretty much does all the same thing. It's slightly different look to the interface. Um, you have to work with Cisco a little bit more because it's Cisco's um, server location and they're doing this all on the back end. Or there's HCS as well, which is pretty much a reseller who hosts this at their data center. And it's this exactly this, and they're providing Expressway into their data center for a customer to be able to use this service. So instead of having to have an end user set all this stuff at their location, HCS allows a reseller who knows what they're doing to set it up at their company location and just give people access to their instance of it. Uh, do we? Ingram Micro can sell it. Uh, we work with partners to actually provide it. And with the new system too, you can do voice activated, so you don't have to press the numbers to get through the um, different menu systems that get put in place. You can actually use AI to figure out what the person is saying. And then now it's coming through here, and I can click answer. And this is now pulled in, it shows that I'm talking. Um, it shows who called in, so this is just a, a name that's randomly given my phone number when I called in. And add email address. Now, say you were talking to the person and you found out, hey, that's not the way you spell that particular Tyler. Maybe it's T I L E R is how you spell his name. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why it would be, but <laughs> maybe that's the case. Uh, you could change that right here and just click save, or you can revert it back. So let's say his email address changed or something like that. That can be all edited right here. And that, again, can be tied back to a call management system. Uh, so you can. Uh, not have to go into another system to constantly make those changes. And you can also pull from those systems. So somebody else has all their customer data already in another uh, call records management system. They can automatically pull that information from there. They call it call popping uh, into this solution. So uh, in our call center, we do that uh, where it, it pulls a uh, call in. It'll show you the name of the person that's calling their Ingram Micro account number, things like that. That can be done uh, through here as well. Uh, once you've got this up and you're talking to the customer, you can go ahead and put the person on hold. 
you can put in a wrap up reason here. So when the customers, when you end the call, you go into that wrap up reason for whatever specified length of time is preset. You can retrieve the call. I can do a direct transfer. I can consult another person, which is pretty much a conference call, or I can do wrap up and I can do end. Um, so this is going to keep track here. But the other thing too, is like if I go under my uh, agent statistics report, I can see my total talk time will continue to grow my whole time, things like that is all here. But I can also see if I wasn't to pick up that call, if I was not ready, that call would show up down here on the line it came in on and it would start ticking up for the longest call in the queue. And when that would hit a certain level, whatever I've set as the admin, I could say, three minutes it goes red just to draw additional attention to those lines, I can do that as well. And what people will often do is they'll set up a report to actually be pushed up to like a digital signage screen or things like that. So if people didn't wanna have a monitor associated strictly to this, if they don't wanna use this software interface, if they'd rather use a hard phone, they could do that as well. But then you lose all this information right here because you're using just to print your hold and your transfer buttons on the phone. You're able to see a little bit of information on the phone of maybe the account number that came in on that kind of stuff, but you're not seeing all the other lines and how they're doing and that kind of stuff. So those places that don't want to maybe have a second monitor or just don't want to have this up all the time, they might put like a digital signage up on the wall to be able to see that information. And uh, there are third parties out there that actually will parse the information uh, for the different lines and put it up in a nice graphical user interface. Or if you're not real worried about how it looks on the wall, you can just throw up uh, this particular display as well and have it show up as a user so they can see all the lines. So you just have that user attached to all the lines. Now, uh, from the, uh, we talked about the main statistics. We talked about how we can move these people around and everything. I can end the call here. And then the, on the phone, it would give me that same one to five, how do we do that kind of stuff? And I can answer those questions up there. It's currently in the wrap up state for five seconds, then kicks me right back into ready. Now, if I go ahead and I put myself say in break and put myself in not ready on the chat, um, now I won't be able to get any calls or chats while I'm in those states. This is what it looks like from an admin perspective. So from an admin, you still have your not ready, you're ready for both chat and email and call. So people can pull you in on a call. I could still do the call history. I can still see a uh, state history so I can see how my team's doing. Um, all that stuff could be shown through this as well. So from here, I can run reporting. So these reports can be sent out uh, on a scheduled basis. So I could say that every Monday I want a report to go out to say how the call agents are doing. I could have that report sent out on an hourly basis or every 10 minutes, whatever I have choose. But a lot of times too, like that takes up a lot of space in email servers. So what people will often do is they'll send out a permalink it's called. And permalinks are pretty much just links that stay current for a uh, report. So when you get the email, it'll just have a link in there. You click that link to view the report instead of having to send an Excel doc to every single person that's on your mailing list, that kind of thing, or every person in your team. You can also go under uh, visualizations and you can pull up different ones. So I can pull up different reports and I can pull this together, but I can go under my dashboards. And if I go under stock reports, let's go real-time reports. And let's say agent reports. Reports. Let's go ahead and run that one. So these are different uh, reports that you can put together. So when I look back at the analyzer, if I go underneath my visualizations, this is where I pull up all the different pieces that are either pre-created or I can create mine from scratch. But uh, once you put them all into a dashboard, just like we currently do in IM360, uh, you can get those then to show up here so you can see how the team's doing or how your call stats are doing and all that stuff can be pushed out either as a permalink or additional information, that kind of thing. 
So like that's a quick overview on the software. Pretty straightforward. They try to make it very easy to use. It's gotten a lot easier over the time. Uh, there used to be a lot more buttons on the side here to get to different things. That's really been streamlined to make it easier for everybody. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of licensing on the back end that it takes to get this stuff to work. There's a lot of third-party add-ins that can be tied into this. There's a lot of custom programming that people often do to tie it into uh, call management systems that are uh, third parties. So uh, you can do that. If you do decide to go with the uh, Cisco solution, uh, the WebEx calling in the cloud uh, call center, that one, the invite only program, that one's going to be pretty similar. The look and feel is a little different and a lot of things are canned. And if you need anything custom, then you have to work with Cisco to get it programmed because it's all in their data center. So it's all kind of locked down. Uh, Cisco has said that the, if you have a third party call management system that you need to get tied into this, uh, they have no problem working with you to get that done. Uh, but it just, it, it's gonna add to the time for the rollout. So they've been able to, if you're good with all can stuff, if you go the cloud route, they can get it all spun up in one to two days. So the last one they did, they said took about a day and a half to get spun up. So that's pretty quick when you think of all the different pieces that it takes to do this. So if I switch back over here, these are all the different things that are running this particular demo here. So I have a CUCM server. I have a couple different workstations that are tied into this. I have a mail server. I have an endpoint router. I've got a services piece, um, PSTN services that tie in for the calling so I can call into it. Uh, there's a lot of different pieces of different servers here that are, are making this work. And this is actually slimmed down from 12.0, which actually needed more servers to make this all work. So there's multiple uh, that you could add to be running on different VMs versus that could be running on the same VM. So there's definitely moving in the right direction, but this still takes more time for someone to set up. On a usual case, when I'm talking to resellers, they usually say it takes them about a week to set up, a week to two weeks. and when you're using a cloud solution that be set up in a day and a half, that's really great for people that need to get things spun up immediately. And especially with a whole bunch of working from home that we recently had that had to be done on the, like a really quick basis where they weren't expecting it to happen. They, a lot of people were looking to that cloud solution to actually offer them a quick solution to that need. Uh, so again, that's going to probably be where a lot of people are going to move to. Uh, but right now, if you want a lot of tie-ins and you, and a lot of people that are currently selling uh, the solution, you're going to be finding that it's often happening that they've been selling this for a very long time. So they might've been selling this since version eight or version nine, and they've been working with this for so many years that they're really familiar with how this works, really familiar with how to set it up. It takes them some time, but they're aware of it all. They know how to fix issues. They wanna jump right in there and fix them versus having to work with like a Cisco TAC to get issues fixed. So it, it just depends on the reseller and what they're more comfortable with. And at this point in time, because the other solution is so new, most of the people I talk to are still more comfortable with the UCCX solution on-prem than using the cloud solution um, or going with HCS because they know the reseller there is going to be on top of things and, and really quick to fix issues. Where if uh, you're going to be looking at a fully cloud managed solution from Cisco, uh, that's where people might not know exactly what they're looking to do yet. So uh, that's very hot right now as far as people looking for information on it and looking at costs and that kind of stuff. But the uh, UCCX version that you saw today is more where most of the sales are still taking place.